the Tianjie World Trade Center was once the busiest shopping mall and dating mecca in Beijing. It was said that all of Beijing looks up to it. What has become now? Shops are closing everywhere, and even the best shops are undergoing so-called upgrades. The renovations take more than half a year, and I don't know when they will open. Looking up, the occupancy rate of the shops above the third floor is extremely low. Of course, the first and second floors are not much better, only catering in some big international brands. This marquee used to be a landmark in Beijing and a popular check-in place on New Year's Eve, but now it's closed most of the time. There were no events on New Year's Eve last year either. You see, cafes and restaurants in prime locations are all closed. This Japanese barbecue restaurant looks quite high end. But did you see the sign? The floor is damaged. Please do not enter. That is to say, it does not meet the conditions for business at all. And I don't know how long it has been closed. There is a dance club here, which looks quite attractive. But when we look inside, we saw that it was full of construction debris. The building has long been deserted. How did prime commercial real estate in Beijing fall to this point? Is this an isolated phenomenon or a common one? Is it the impact of e-commerce, changes in consumption habits, or is there a deeper reason? In the northern part of Beijing's central business district, the China World Trade Center is composed of leisure shopping centers on the north and south sides and two 5A office buildings. It boasts a world-renowned electronic sky curtain that cost approximately 250 million yuan. This 250 meter long, 30 meter wide structure, flanked by numerous renowned stores, opened in 2007. With the momentum of the 2008 Beijing Olympics, it became the most vibrant place in Beijing and a must-visit spot for internet celebrities. However, over a decade later, with brands withdrawing and consumers turning away, this once bustling commercial area is now desolate. The giant screen that everyone in Beijing looked up at still stands, but it is no longer the favored shopping center. Alas, Sephora is closed and so is this place. What a lively place it used to be. There are still two open doors on the first floor. This one further on is also closed. I forgot what they were selling here before, and now it's closed. It's so scary. They're all closed. In such a large commercial center, only three or four businesses are still open. The China World Trade Center's downfall is caused by a shift in China's commercial landscape, affecting not only Beijing's downtown, but the entire commercial real estate and physical retail model. As a high-end shopping and leisure center in a prime location, the center is surrounded by many Fortune 500 companies such as Samsung, Toyota, Hyundai, and Deutsche Bank. Nearby, there are large shopping centers such as Chiu Fang Lan, Beijing SKP, and others. The Sky Curtain initially drew a lot of foot traffic to the center, making it a trendy destination. It attracted many big brands and became a symbol of high-end consumption. The center once boasted an impressive occupancy rate of 98%, offering a high-end integrated shopping experience covering fashion, leisure, entertainment, gourmet dining, and cultural arts. Soon, the commercial model of the China World Trade Center was quickly replicated by emerging competitors. Chiu Fu Fang Lan, with a similar high-end positioning, became a new landmark, while Beijing SKP and China World Mall introduced a wealth of resources from international first-tier brands. As competitors caught up, shoppers slipped away from China World Trade Center. Since 2018, stores of major brands have left one after another. Paris Baguette shut down. Once popular restaurants such as Golden Leopard Buffet and Shanghai Xiaonanguo have also closed their doors. There are many vacant stores throughout the mall, whether it's the South District or the North District, at least five of the floors have opening soon signs. Only a few brands like Zara, Uniqlo, Fila, and Sephora are still able to maintain a presence. Most high-quality brands are located in the South Zone of the mall, while the entire North Side is almost deserted. Apart from the food court on the underground floor, there are few open stores. As more and more shops in the mall become vacant, foot traffic decreases. To fill the vacancies, the center has been actively introducing new stores, but except for Tim Hortons Coffee from Canada, the other brands such as Hainan Coconut Chicken, Wu Hu Jiang, and Zhe Family Barbecue Rice are all domestic casual dining or fast food joints, which are inconsistent with the center's initial positioning. Due to the intensifying industry competition, the World Trade Center has had to gradually abandon its high-end route and shift to fast fashion and dining. However, this reform is not thorough, and management seems unsure how to proceed. 
In order to attract young white-collar workers, the children's playground under the sky curtain was once removed, but now the carousel has reappeared, attracting children and repelling white-collar workers. According to a customer at the World Trade Center, in recent years, every visit to the lower level has seen a change. The once iconic sky curtain has now become a cheap advertising message, with children's play projects filling the area, and in the evenings, it's mostly elderly people taking grandchildren out for a walk. Office workers nearby blamed the outdated format of the center, and the fact that there are many shopping centers nearby. For example, Chao Fu Fang Lan, Taiku Li San Li Tun, and China World Mall all divert customers from the World Trade Center. Furthermore, the mall has not been kept up. Some ceramic tile floors have been damaged due to age, especially in the north zone, and the lighting is very dim. Both the mall's layout and interior environment are out of touch. Moreover, the three years of the pandemic have dealt a huge blow to the World Trade Center. Severe lockdown policies have virtually halted sales, causing many brands to operate at a loss. It is said that at that time, merchants requested a 50% discount on rents, but the mall did not agree, and many merchants left. This not only further exacerbated its market downturn, but also shelved renovation plans. After surviving the lockdown, merchants did not see the expected return of consumption. Instead, no one wanted to spend, which was the final straw that broke their backs. With fewer and fewer visitors to the mall, and more and more shops closing, a vicious cycle has formed, and the World Trade Center seems to have been abandoned. Post-COVID, China's economic recovery fell short of expectations. Additionally, influenced by geopolitics, foreign capital continued to withdraw. China gradually became completely disconnected from the West in terms of technology and supply chains. Unemployment and pay cuts have become daily challenges for people. Groups that used to be heavy spenders are also tightening their belts. Other commercial areas in Beijing are also visibly sluggish. The nightlife in Beijing is pretty much over. You might say that weather is getting warmer now, but there are still not many people coming out to play. This is San Li Tun Gongti North Road at 9 o'clock in the evening on a weekend. There are no cars on the road. What sort of stimulus or spending can make business pick up? It would be a big deal if this city never regained vitality. Gui Street, now nicknamed the Ghost Street, is located in Dongcheng District, Beijing. It began as a night market created by the Beijing government and was once the liveliest place in town. Along this 1.5-kilometer street are more than 150 commercial stores, with 90% of them being food service establishments. It may be difficult to find another street with such a high density of restaurants in Beijing. Therefore, Gui Street is known as Beijing's food street. In the past, when the night fell, Gui Street was so bustling that it was almost impossible to move. But now it really is a ghost street. It's before 9 o'clock on Gui Street. Merchants are closing up. The pedestrians seem to be floating through. The once bustling restaurant used to have a long row of plastic stools for customers waiting for a table. But now they're empty. The spacious four-lane Douzhu Ban Street is completely empty. You would think everyone was home, and it was the first day of Chinese New Year. The Hu Hotel in Yemen Court, known for Beijing's best spicy crayfish, is now neglected. They even put some elderly people to sit down under the heating lamp, as if they were waiting for seats. They were shivering from the cold, which would be obvious to anyone with a discerning eye. The names of the shops are well chosen. Spring flowers blooming, a piece of white paper, a popular shop for rent. It's obviously ironic. The rise and fall of the World Trade Center mirrors the challenges seen across commercial real estate in China. Many formerly thriving commercial areas now struggle with high vacancy rates, decreased foot traffic, and increased uniformity. These challenges, stemming from shifts in consumer behavior and the lingering effects of the pandemic era, present a significant obstacle for the entire commercial real estate industry in China. Recently, Wanda Group announced that it would sell off 14 of its plazas. The news caused a stir in the business world. As a leading enterprise in China's commercial real estate sector, Wanda Group's core subsidiary, Wanda Commercial Management Group, once managed 417 commercial plazas. Therefore, Wanda's actions often serve as a barometer for China's commercial real estate. Wanda Plaza is a commercial real estate urban complex that integrates shopping, leisure, and dining functions. It includes shopping centers, commercial pedestrian streets, hotels, office buildings, apartments, and other supporting facilities. It is the largest chain of commercial complexes in China, covering all provinces, autonomous regions, and municipalities directly under the central government of mainland China.
These Wanda plazas, as urban commercial centers, have always been places with dense foot traffic and a strong commercial atmosphere. However, in recent years, with the rise of e-commerce and the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, brick-and-mortar stores are facing a series of challenges. Wanda plazas, which were once bustling, are now quiet, with many stores closed and drastically reduced foot traffic. This is Wanda Jin Street in Huli, Xiamen. On February 3rd, the eve of the Chinese New Year, a local conducted an on-site inspection and found that many stores were closed. This was during China's peak shopping season. The first thing I saw was that this 400 square meter hotel was closed. These were the first and second hotels. Continuing on, six, seven high-end hotels couldn't keep their doors open. The first floor is for rent, three, four. The man walked down the entire Jin Street and found that 40 stores were closed. This is only the number of stores with closed or for rent signs posted on the door. Those that were closed but did not have a sign were not included in the count, so the actual number of closed stores may be greater. The man asked whether it's because the rent is too high or because nobody is shopping. This is a widespread phenomenon. Wanda Group has been facing a debt crisis since last year due to poor operation of core assets. In order to ease the cash flow problem, Wanda Group has sold several Wanda plazas nationwide in the past year. In addition to Wanda Plaza, Wanda has also sold other business assets. For example, Wanda has transferred the equity of Wanda Films three times. Not only that, its founder, Wang Jianlin, has also sold his equity in various companies and realized assets multiple times, including selling off Shanghai Wanda Hotel, among others. In 2022, Wang Jianlin even made large-scale purchases of a large number of assets. Wang Jianlin's transformation, while reflecting Wanda's own reasons, also illustrates that China's business model is undergoing significant changes. 2023 may have been a turning point for China's commercial environment, and this year may be even worse. Today is Sunday, March 24th. The 60,000 square meter Wuhan International Plaza is full of salespeople. The gold counter on the first floor was completely empty, not even a merchant. What's even more frightening is that the closing time has moved from 10 o'clock to 9.30. That means no one goes to the mall anymore. Closing the door early can save half an hour of electricity. There's a term in shopping malls called bag carrying rate. That is, if there are 100 people visiting the mall and 20 people are carrying bags, it means that the bag carrying rate is 20%. The higher the bag carrying rate, the more people are buying things. But now, even if there are people visiting the mall, no one is buying anything. So the mall is closing early. But businesses suffer. You have to hire a clerk to make sales, but even if you have a clerk, no one is shopping. Shopping malls are now facing two major crises. On one hand, they are not popular and merchants are likely to withdraw. On the other hand, they face competition. Can you imagine? This is the most prosperous place in Hainan Free Trade Port, the Guomao Yixin Mall in Longhua District, Haikou City. This is one of the most sophisticated large-scale commercial complexes in Hainan Island. Every inch used to be crowded with people, but now it is deserted everywhere and stores are closed, seeking investment. Even the shops that were still open are deserted and there are more clerks than customers. Is this because of the impact of the internet on offline consumption? or because Hainan is unattractive to tourists. Hainan has developed many concepts over the years, from an international tourist island to a free trade zone. But despite all the proposals, the local economy is still in the same state. It is said that closing the border in 2025 will save Hainan's economy. Dongguan, the city formerly known as the world's factory, attracted many foreign investments and almost rivaled Shenzhen in its heyday. However, as many factories moved to Southeast Asia, India, and other places, Dongguan became an abandoned city. Bustling commercial streets have become memories for generations of workers. The decline of physical stores in China's commercial centers is attributed to both shifts in consumer behavior and business models, as well as the broader economic downturn. Reduced consumer spending, stemming from lower incomes, plays a significant role in this trend. This man candidly expresses what many Chinese are thinking. Obviously, there's a problem with spending. I've been working for more than 10 years in banking and have never been in a situation like this year. There are no people in shopping malls. Physical stores are closing down, and high-end houses cannot be rented out. Where have all the people gone? In the past two years, I feel like I don't go shopping or spend much. I spend less if I can. Many people save whatever money they earn and are more afraid to spend it. In the past, I never bought anything in Pinduoduo. It felt like a ripoff. But now, not only do I accept it, but I actually think it's pretty good. I used to take a taxi when I went out, but now I'm used to taking public transportation. It looks like no one's around. 
but really everyone is really out of money. Businesses are not doing well. These major internet companies are continuing to lay off employees and cut salaries. Prices are so high that vegetables and fruits in supermarkets are in yuan, not cents. The watermelon I saw in the supermarket a few days ago cost more than 6 yuan per pound, and a small watermelon costs dozens of yuan. The monthly salary is only 5,000 yuan, and the average is just over 100 yuan a day, so there is no spare money for consumption at all. This is a current situation. The rise and fall of China's commercial real estate industry mirror the country's economic growth and changing external factors. Initially, with rapid economic development, urbanization, and increased consumer spending, commercial real estate, especially malls, thrived. However, as economic growth slowed, the demographic dividend waned, and consumer preferences shift. After the pandemic, economic depression and reduced high-end spending have made consumers more cautious, impacting physical retail. High vacancy rates, intense competition, and declining returns on investment are now common leading to widespread store closures and the inevitable decline of commercial real estate in China.